Deadliest Warrior, Viet Cong vs. the Waffen SS. With a complete contrast of cultures and combat styles, the Viet Cong and the German Waffen SS had almost polar opposite approaches to warfare. Therefore, it begs the question, in a hypothetical battle, which of these two forces would win? Guns The Viet Cong acquired much of its mind-boggling array of weaponry from either China, the USSR, from stockpiles left behind by their former colonial masters, the French, or from captured American shipments. The vast majority of the armaments they received or pilfered were outdated World War II weapons, such as the Soviet 7.62mm Mosin Nagant M1944 carbine, the French 9mm MAT-49 submachine gun, and the M1918A2 Browning automatic rifle, to name a few. From 1968, though, VC forces started to be equipped with the more formidable Soviet 7.62mm AK-47 and the RPD Type 56 light machine gun. The Waffen-SS also had an impressive arsenal of primary weapons to choose from. The standard rifle was the German Army's 7.92mm Car 98K, a traditional breech loader with a five-round magazine. To add to this, the SS had an impressive selection of submachine guns at their disposal, such as the MP28, MP34-35, MP38, and MP40, as well as a range of elite heavy machine guns including the MG34 and MG42, famed for their incredible rate of fire. Although having limited range and accuracy, personal sidearms like the Luger, P-38 Walther, and Mauser pistols were also used, but only as a last resort. On balance, then, both sides appear to have an equal amount of firepower at their disposal. An important difference, however, was that unlike the Viet Cong, who employed anything they could get their hands on, the SS arsenal was far more standardized. Thus, their greater familiarity with the weapons they used would give them a slight advantage over the VC fighters, who were often forced to use rifles and machine guns they hadn't been taught to use properly. Explosives The Viet Cong's most effective explosive weapons were the RPG-2, Type 56, and RPG-7 anti-tank projectors, primarily used to destroy unsuspecting enemy tanks and armor. These rocket-propelled grenade launchers were not only lethal but extremely easy to operate, requiring only an hour's training. Elsewhere, the VC were equipped with a variety of basic US, Russian, and Chinese or crudely handmade hand grenades and mines, as well as mortars ranging from 60mm to 120mm in caliber. The Waffen SS soldier was also equipped with an impressive assortment of explosives, with conventional egg and stick hand grenades, anti personnel and anti armor mines, and mortars as just some of the treats on offer. However, the most formidable SS armaments in this category were a pair of German designed bazookas. This included the Panzerfaust a simple metal tube that ejected a fin-stabilized grenade with a range of 30 meters that could penetrate 140 millimeters of armor plate, and the Panzer Schreck, which had a range of 120 meters and could penetrate 100 millimeters of armor plate. With these types of munitions, both sides appear to be pretty evenly matched, with no clear winner. Equipment and Supplies in appearance, the Viet Cong were decked out with a green or black pajama-style uniform for camouflage or civilian clothes that made them indistinguishable from the local population. To blend in with their jungle surroundings, they were also issued a US four-color nylon parachute cloth. On their head, they either wore a broad-brimmed jungle hat, a light olive green or tan cloth-colored fiber pith helmet, or Chinese and Soviet steel helmets. Viet Cong guerrillas traveled extremely light and were usually able to carry five days' worth of rations, which consisted mainly of rice and everything else they needed in their pockets. Unlike the Viet Cong, who only fought in the subtropical temperatures of their homeland, the Waffen SS had clothes that catered to all environmental conditions. 
All personnel were also issued a reversible pullover smock with multiple camouflage configurations for all seasons and biomes, with light and dark green for spring, purplish brown for summer, and brown for autumn. Placed on their head was a steel helmet, offering limited protection, which also safeguarded the ears and neck. The SS were typically sent out on missions with a ration pack consisting of gray rye bread, canned meat, canned vegetables, butter, coffee, and sugar that could last them about four days. While the SS had superior equipment and a greater quantity of rations, the lightly packed Viet Cong were a lot more mobile and could survive for longer in the field with a lot less. Thus, in a drawn-out jungle engagement that required endurance and maneuverability, the Viet Cong would have the upper hand. On the other hand, in a battlefield that was sparser and colder, the SS would be a lot better prepared. Training For training, Viet Cong conscripts were usually put together in small groups that were taught the basics of warfare in the form of lectures and repetitive exercises, while the extent and quality of practical hands-on instruction was often determined by the availability of weapons and equipment on hand. This lack of standardization meant that instructors were often forced to improvise with the little resources at their disposal. Cardboard silhouettes of helicopters, for example, were often suspended on pulley ropes for riflemen to shoot. A chronic lack of ammunition also meant that some guerrillas, after six to eight days of basic training, only received weapons training after being assigned to their unit or while actually in combat. While the average Viet Cong soldier was only 1.6 meters in height, the Waffen SS were much more selective, only accepting men into their ranks who were at least 1.8 meters tall. As well as being physically superior, SS servicemen were also better trained. As Nazi Germany's most elite fighting unit, they were subject to a brutal and strict training regime where aggression was encouraged and rewarded by instructors. This was reinforced by mock rifle and bayonet duels, martial arts lessons, and boxing, which was viewed as a good way to teach men to overcome their fear of pain. Training was also incredibly thorough, with men expected to strip down and clean their rifles blindfolded by the end of it. In this area, then, the SS would very clearly have the edge over the Viet Cong, whose improvised training regime often woefully prepared recruits for real combat situations. In contrast, the SS made better soldiers because of a greater emphasis on aggression, professionalism, combat proficiency, and battlefield readiness. Tactics The Viet Cong's preferred battlefield tactic was guerrilla warfare, a strategy in which fighters blended in with the environment to hide their position from the enemy. In a typical raid, they would launch a quick surprise attack before retreating back into the undergrowth of the jungle. They also used a vast underground network of tunnels stretching for over 200 miles to conceal their movements. These subterranean complexes not only helped with ambush, but were littered with lethal booby traps that incorporated spikes, grenades, and even snakes and scorpions. The Waffen SS, on the other hand, put a lot less emphasis on sabotage and ambush, preferring to crush their foe with speed, precision, and intensity. The basic concept of the Blitzkrieg tactic was to overpower small segments of the enemy line with an intense onslaught of personnel and torrents of grenades and heavy fire. After breaking through, the men were told to move forward as quickly as possible to keep their opponents unbalanced as further actions on either side wiped out enemy regiments on their flanks. Even against a better equipped enemy that was numerically greater, this strategy could be incredibly effective. On the other hand, the Blitzkrieg, designed for the many pitched battles of World War II, would be extremely ineffective against the Viet Cong because they actively avoided open engagements. In contrast, as shown by the American experience in the Vietnam War, guerrilla warfare could bring even the most technologically advanced army in the world to its knees, making it likely that the SS would suffer a similar fate. Verdict Having the advantage of better training and a focus on extreme aggression, in a conventional open battle, the Waffen SS would decimate the less disciplined Viet Cong in a gunfight, despite both sides possessing similar amounts of firepower. 
Equally in a close quarters duel, the SS, who were much bigger in stature, trained in martial arts, and bayonet charge experts, would more easily be able to defeat their smaller Vietnamese foe. On the other hand, if it was a protracted conflict fought among jungles and forests, then the Viet Cong would emerge as clear winners, since they could survive longer in the wild and with less resources than the SS. The Viet Cong's knowledge and expert application of guerrilla warfare would ultimately prevail in a landscape where it was easier to hide and coax the enemy towards ambushes and traps. However, in environments with less natural cover, the SS would likely have the upper hand since the Vietnamese would have no choice but to directly confront them. Hey, it's Chris Kane. You're probably used to hearing me during one of our advertising spots, but today I want to talk about something a little bit different. Every video that we create is more than just content. It's a blend of research, of creativity, of passion for history. We do it because we believe in the power of history, because its lessons, its stories, and its ability to connect everybody is what we're all about. Sometimes the reality of operating a YouTube channel uh, presents challenges uh, in the form of demonetization occasionally, which impacts the ability to produce content that we're passionate about. Now we're looking at you, our amazing audience, to ask for your support in keeping the channel, our shared passion, alive and thriving. We're inviting you to join us on Patreon and contribute to the ongoing creation of our content. By joining us on Patreon, you're doing more than just supporting our content. You're becoming an integral part of the community, and we're dedicated to preserving and promoting history. Remember, every bit of support makes a real difference. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help, please visit the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for your interest and your hunger for history.